The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Returning from the district of Tyre, Jesus went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee, right through the Decapolis region. And they brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they asked him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, put his fingers into the man's ears, and touched his tongue with spittle. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed, and he said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and the ligament of his tongue was loosened, and he spoke clearly. And Jesus ordered them to tell no one about it, but the more he insisted, the more widely they published it. Their admiration was unbounded. He has done all things well, they said. He makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. A very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, in today's gospel, we see Jesus healing the deaf and mute man. And at the end of this whole healing episode, we see those who have seen him heal the man, and perhaps others also who saw other miracles and the way Jesus treated others. We see them exclaim with admiration, he has done all things well. Now, that's the theme for the reflection for today's Mass, if you notice at the beginning, after all the announcements and the turn off your handphone uh, announcement also. Very quickly, it was there, the theme for the 23rd Sunday, which is the Lord who has done all things well. Now, that is an invitation for us to reflect on the way Jesus does things. You know, we take him not only as our Lord and Savior, we take him also as our model. In other words, if we want to learn how to be a good person, we look at the example of Jesus. And why? Because indeed, he has done all things well. And we would also like to do all things well. Now, if we look closely at today's whole uh, situation, the first thing to note is that Jesus takes the deaf man away from the eyes and scrutiny of the rest. He takes him into a private place, takes him aside. And the reason for this is, actually, Jesus does not want all of these healings and miracles to be a spectacle. You know, something for people to watch. And it's like a show, you know, that they're watching. To Like putting on a show, whether a magic show, whatever show. He doesn't want that person who is suffering to just be an object for people to look at and see some performance taking place, regardless of whether they will admire Jesus or not for what he does. So he, he values, you know, the privacy of the person the dignity of the person, not to be just, whether a willing or unwilling, actor in somebody else's viewing pleasure. Okay, so this respecting of the man's privacy, the first thing that we can learn from Jesus, and we can practice this also in the things that we do, when we want to do something for another person, we want to assist another person in some whatever it is, do we want to proclaim it to the whole world, make a big show out of it? Maybe even to the embarrassment of the person so that we gain a little bit more glory, right? Forgetting that what's important is the welfare of the person. So sometimes it's good that we should do good for others, helping others secretly, yeah? And your Father in heaven knows what you have done. 
Okay, of course, there were some who were witnessing what had happened. That's also good these days, you know, never just be two people in a room. Especially if you are a public person, make sure you have a chaperone. Whether you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're a priest, you're whatever. So yes, Jesus has his chaperones. And they also will bear witness to him. Though, we see that he will tell them actually not to tell anyone about it. But you know, like human beings, quite hard to keep their mouth shut. So at least they are proclaiming the good thing that Jesus did. And yes, that fills the people with admiration. So, first thing we can reflect upon today, do we broadcast the difficulties of people? Do we make a show, a spectacle out of the suffering of others? Just to prop ourselves up in the good deed that we might be doing. So remember, if you do charity also, what your right hand is doing, let your left hand also not know. So this is out of respect more for the person that you are helping rather than for trying to hide the good things that God is doing. Don't worry. You hide it also. If it is God's word, it will be made known in the proper way, at the right time, by the right persons. Okay, so something we can learn today. Yes, indeed, he has done all things well. Now, the second thing we see, how Jesus heals the person. A few days ago, our all the priests, we are eating dinner together. La. You know, I live in a community, so we are four, five, six priests there. Um, sometimes as the weekend is approaching, we'll discuss, hey, this weekend, what are you going to say in your homily? <laughs> we try to get ideas of each other. So, you know, one of the priests was saying to me, why did Jesus do this? Huh? Go and put his finger into the man's ear, then go and take his spit, go and put on <laughs> the person's tongue. Wow, we might find it even disgusting, you know, what is he doing? Okay, so he was asking me, la. anyway, I was too busy eating my dinner. I said, I haven't thought about it yet. <laughs> okay, but after that, I was thinking about it. And I said, why did Jesus perform the miracle in this way? And my priest friend was saying, couldn't he just have said, be healed, finish? You know, and be healed. That's it, using his word, you know. Now I thought about it. Ah, yeah, the fellow is deaf, la. <laughs> Got it. He's deaf. How can you heal him with your word? Be healed. No. So, he was using sign language, using his hands literally. That's why he put his hand into the ear, touched the fellow's tongue. That was his way of saying, be healed, but non-verbally. Okay? Did you all ever think about this? Yeah, a lot of things are in the gospel. We don't really reflect sometimes. You, know, you need somebody to ask a question. Then only you will think about it. You know? And I say, yeah, the fellow is deaf. Of course. This was the right way to heal him. Now, you know, in the church also, we have sacramentals. Material things that we use, you know, holy water, holy oils. And in fact, St. James, yeah, in the letter of St. James, he tells us, if anyone is sick among you, he says, go and call the priest, the presbyter. Call the priest, and the priest will come and anoint the person with oil, and he will be healed. So that's why today we have the sacrament of the sick. And yes, the priest doesn't just go there and say, be healed. Even if you can hear, he will take oil, and he will anoint you with the oil on the forehead and on the palms of your hand. Yeah, saying the formula for anointing of the sick, which is, through this holy anointing, may the Lord in His love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. So that's the words the priest will say when he anoints the sick person. Okay, so from this example of Jesus also, we can understand that it's also permissible to heal and to communicate the assistance of God, not just by words, but also through material things. So today, of course, we see Jesus using his saliva, spittle, his spit. Hmm, I think none of us would like the priest to do that, right? Better don't. We got the oil. We stick with the oil. It's enough. And they put some perfume in the oil or so, all the oil smells nice, or I don't know, 
No, no, the oil has the perfume only for the uh, chrism oil. Oil of the sick, no. The balsam, you know, they pour only for the chrism oil. Very nice smelling. Okay. So, that's the other thing we can look at today. Just to reflect, you know. But I feel there is a deeper meaning to what is happening. And a few days ago, I was listening to Pope Francis. Where was he? He was in Indonesia, right? And on Wednesday, he was at the cathedral in Jakarta. And he was meeting all the bishops, the priests, the seminarians, the religious sisters and brothers, you know, all those the ministers in the church and all that. He was meeting them in the cathedral of Jakarta. And he had a very interesting message for them. He said to them, you know, do you touch poverty? Tocare la povertà. Touch poverty, literally. And then he said, when you give alms to someone, do you touch their hand? Do you make eye contact, look at them in their eyes? Or do you take the arms and just put it into their whatever coin box, their begging bowl, whatever it is? Just, okay, I want to give arms. Look, that's it. Do I really make contact with the person? Do I try to enter into the reality of that person and have compassion to suffer with the person? This is what the Pope was saying. Okay, and uh, that helped me to meditate on today's gospel also whereby we see this healing that takes place of this man is a very personal and intimate encounter, right? So again, not just some famous preacher putting his hands out and saying, be healed, and pop, so many people drop down, and okay, they're all healed. Here Jesus is building a personal relationship with this person who is deaf and mute. There is the personal touch. Literally, he touches the person. And that is the power of human touch. And the power also of the human gaze. When you look at somebody in their eyes. Some people cannot take it. They're like, why are you looking at me in my eyes? They will turn away. It's a very intimate thing, actually. When we notice people and we look into their eyes. And I'm quite certain, as he was putting his finger into the ear of the deaf person, putting spittle onto his tongue, I'm sure Jesus was making eye contact. It's not written here, but let us allow ourselves to imagine just a little bit. I'm quite certain he was making eye contact with the deaf and mute man. So this is something that we can also learn from the example of Jesus. In my relationships with others, whoever they may be, whether they are poor, whether they are rich, whoever I'm relating with, is there really that personal touch? Is that really that entering into a relationship? Is, that really, is there really that acknowledging the presence of the other person as a dignified son and daughter of God? Uh, that's what's important. Acknowledging the dignity of the human being. Now, when we have that attitude in us, we won't fall into the problem we see in the second reading, where St. James has to scold them and say, somebody coming to your synagogue, rich man, you say, okay, come, 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 sit in front, got gold ring, all sit in front. Poor man comes, hey, you, out, that's it, stay, far, far away, or maybe sit at my foot. If you recognize everyone as a dignified son and daughter of God, you won't be looking at whether got gold ring on the finger or not. See the point? It all is interior, you know, the attitudes we have. And if we don't have the right attitudes, we are not going to try to touch the realities that we encounter. Okay? Now, oh, okay, I got lost already. Where am I? Okay. Mm, all right. So, remember, Jesus has done all things well, and we are invited to also do all things well. And above all, my dear brothers and sisters, have a heart for the poor and the suffering. Oftentimes, the greatest pain that they suffer is not their lack of money, 
but the lack of people's respect, that's one thing. The lack of friends, the lack of people who are willing to see them as someone to communicate with, not just as an object of receiving charity so that someone can build their stairway to heaven. Not that we believe in salvation by deeds, huh? but there are some who think by doing all this, I'm building my way to heaven. Just as a means for us to be good. No. This is one of the sufferings that those who receive charity, whatever form it is, huh? whether financial charity, whether it is the charity of your service and time, I'm thinking of the sick, the elderly, they're also poor in their own way. Do we really value them as a dignified son and daughter of God? Not just as an object of our charity. So today, my dear brothers and sisters, I invite all of us here to touch authentically the realities that are present in our lives. And let us really be another Christ and follow the good example of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ.